This is an extract from the Leader podcast by The Evening Standard, hosted by me, David Marsland. To hear the whole thing, search for us on your podcast provider. You must buy a ticket before you get on one of our trains. If you do not show a valid ticket when asked, you may be liable to pay a penalty fee. The Office of Rail and Road says the number of passenger journeys by train fell by 51 million during lockdown. Its next set of figures won't come out until October. They're likely to see a rise, but not to pre-pandemic levels. The government's trying to encourage commuters to get back to offices, so city centres like London's don't face economic ruin. And while all this is happening, it's been decided to put rail fares up by 1.6%. That's a rise of about £80 for a Brighton to London season ticket, which will cost £5,060. Our editorial column says it's bad timing. In normal times, according to the formula set by the government, this figure would be applied to lift the price of tickets from the start of January. The logic in the past, which this newspaper has endorsed, is that the additional money should be used to help pay for improved services. But the advent of coronavirus and the reluctance of many to get back on trains and the tube means that the situation this time is entirely different. Ministers should forget about applying the usual annual fares hike and work with train companies to achieve the universal provision of part-time season tickets that allow people to benefit from discounts if they travel in only a few days each week or month. But if more government investment is needed, that must come too. For London in particular, getting more people back on public transport is essential. We will be calling at Stratford, Maryland. Other alternatives? Well, I'm joined by Mike Hewitson from the Transport Focus Watchdog. Mike, putting fares up at this time isn't really going to inspire people to get back on a train and go to the office, is it? Um, no. Uh, I mean, the issue at the moment is how you get more bums on seats. And to have the agenda now dominated between now and Christmas by how much fares are going up. Fares going up puts people off trains, not gets people on trains. So it would be so much better if the debate now was about new fares, new products designed to fill up those empty seats, designed to be more attractive to people who aren't going to be five day a week commuters anymore, rather than can we have some more money, please? Are there alternatives to this? Did train fares have to go up? No. I mean, clearly, like any business, it's, it's got some flexibility. I mean, it's got to meet its costs. And as a taxpayer, as well as a fair payer, I can understand the arguments from government about their pumping billions of pounds to keep rail going during the virus and, and good. You know, I mean, it was essential to get people to work, key workers, essential journeys and such. And it's right that passengers pay a share. But I suppose from my perspective, as a, as a long-standing commuter, I've been paying above inflation rates now for quite some time. I've been doing my share. And coronavirus has rather changed the rules. And the priority has to be getting more people back on trains. And that means deals and offers, not fare increases. But like you said, there is a lot of justification for rail rises. It's not like they can discount fares, is it? Um, well, I think for a lot of people, it's value for money that really counts. If you're a, a, someone who's been working from home and you're edging back into this sort of mixed part home working, part office working, you are not going to buy a weekly season ticket. You're not going to throw three or four days worth of travel uh, in the bin and think you've got a good deal. So it's not so much um, how much they're going to go up by. It's, it's introducing a new product that says, here's a carnet or a flexible season ticket, buy 10 tickets, we'll give you a discount. You can use two this week, none the next week, three the week after that. You can now, we will now match the way you want to travel rather than forcing you to travel the way that the old fare structure did. And that represents value for money. Would that be a long-term change, Mike? Is that what you'd expect? Well, I think some train companies have got these already. The carnet type concepts are in. Um, C2C, London South End's got something. Um, you know, other train companies are looking to bring them in. So I think these could be in quickly. They could certainly be in by Christmas. I think some of the longer term fare reform will take a bit longer partly because I think it was in hand anyway, but it, it, it's quite hard to know what to base things on. You don't know what the normal level of demand is going to be when we come out a little bit further out of the virus. So it's quite hard to make those long-term decisions. But certainly the, the immediate challenge 
is getting more of those commuting seats filled up. 